some would say common sense, some, as the president said uh, when he was running for, Senator Obama said when he was running for president, it was despicable. Um, and that's not an impossible case to make, but it seems to me that anyone who condemns what we did as despicable has to see that the context in which we were living was triply despicable. It was not only this murder of 6,000 people a week, but it was really a country coming apart. 135 cities occupied by American troops after the murder of, of Martin Luther King. It was a, a, a crisis that was hard to kind of wrap your mind around. So we did what we did. Um, and then, uh, let me see where to go from there. So uh, again, I don't think, I don't think that it was, um, I, I don't, well, Mark Rudd, I just came in at the end of the movie and Mark Rudd is saying, violence didn't work. And then you want to immediately, I immediately want to ask, what worked? What worked? And to call what we did violence also seems to me to kind of stretch the imagination. Uh, I mean, and that's why the first characterization of it wasn't, I, I couldn't completely get traction with it. Because what we did was, we made a choice right away in 1970, after the townhouse. We made a choice that we were not going to hurt or injure or kill anyone if we could possibly avoid it. But we were going to build this clandestine organization. We were going to issue a screaming indictment of empire. Um, we were going to try to wake up, you know, what we thought of as kind of a, a sleeping uh, American public. That's what we wanted to do. But we were not going to hurt or kill anyone, and we didn't kill anyone. And that's why I didn't go to jail for longer. That's the simple explanation, that I was indicted, as many of us were, for conspiracy to, over conspiracy to destroy government property and conspiracy to create an insurrection. Those conspiracy indictments were dropped. Why they were dropped, as the film indicates, is because of illegal activity on the part of the FBI. I don't think it's mentioned in the film, but one of the illegal activities is they had a written plan to kidnap my two-year-old nephew in order to force Bernadine to turn herself in. That's even in America, <clears throat> well, I don't know about now, but back then, that was considered really extreme and crazy. Um, so they had no case to bring to court, and that's why we were, the indictments, which were serious, put that Bernadine on the 10 most wanted list and many other people. That's why they were dropped. So that answers a couple of your questions, perhaps, unless you want to fire back at me, and then I'll keep going. Do you want to, does, does that answer your question? Either of you? And then since, since then, well, and then the question, what have you been doing? Are you still active? <coughs> will capitalism end? <coughs> I don't know if anybody can say whether capitalism will end before the world ends, but I think that capitalism still has to be opposed. I think that we're in a crisis that, um, you know, a serious crisis of, um, as, as somebody just said, we're, we're fighting, the United States is engaged in four wars, and I think German, Germany is not innocent in that either, right? We're engaged in at least four wars, and there's a sense that war, the war economy is permanent in the United States, the war culture is permanent, um, the culture of violence and violent solutions is permanent, and yet there's a growing and pretty sustained anti-war sentiment. I wouldn't yet call it an anti-war movement, but interestingly, after 9-11 and after the invasion of Iraq, it took only three years, like this must be a pattern, it took only three years for the American people to turn against the invasion of Iraq. And once again, a majority opposes that war, which is astonishing when you realize that there's no reporting from that battlefield that gets to Americans. There's no information. Um, there's an absolutely controlled media, and there's jingoism at every corner. And yet, still somehow, Americans grew to oppose that war. And I think that's a hopeful sign. You were looking for hopeful signs. That's a hopeful sign. Um, yeah, and so the question, has anything changed? Let me just say one quick thing about that. And, and that human beings are just like that, and they're just violent, and so on. Um, you know, I, I think, I'm reminded of Zhou Enlai, the premier of China. Uh, he was asked in the mid-60s whether, the, by a French journalist, whether the French Revolution of the 18th century had had an impact on the Chinese Revolution of the 20th century. And he thought about it for a while and he said, you know, it's too soon to tell. 
And I think that we, you know, we like to kind of analyze everything and get it all right. Whatever happened in the 60s, one of the things you sh I guess you should know is that I wrote this book, but I have no nostalgia for the 60s. I don't, I, I actually get irritated when I'm around people of my generation who are kind of looking longingly at a ship that already left the shore. It seems to me whatever the 60s was, it was prelude to right now. And the problem with the glorification, either the demonization or the valorization of the 60s, is that it acts like a wet blanket on, on activists today. And I can't, I don't know if that's true here, but I can't tell you the number of activists in the United States who say, oh, I mean, young people, if it were only the 60s, I was born in the wrong decade. If I'd only been around in the 60s, where we had the best demonstrations, the best music, the best sex, and I'm like, damn, dude, the sex is still fine. You know, what's wrong? I mean, you know, it's like people get this kind of idea that we're living in these decades. You guys don't live in decades, right? And I don't remember looking at my watch in December 31st, 1969 and saying, oh, shit, I've got to get busy. It's almost over. It didn't feel like that at all. It doesn't feel like that. You don't live your life that way. So the 60s is myth and symbol. It's a creation of some kind of media fantasy. When did it begin, the 60s? 1954? When did it end? 1979? You know, it's hard to... So I don't buy that stuff at all. Um, things are always changing. So have things changed? Absolutely, they're always changing. Let me take one obvious example. <clears throat> you know, the election of Barack Obama, which I'll talk about for a second. Um, the fact that a country with the, with the, that was born in white supremacy, that, that has allowed white supremacy to, and by, by white supremacy I don't mean prejudice, I mean a system of white superiority and black inferiority.